See, if I don't believe that the rapture can happen at any time, there's no hurry. See, if I believe the rapture can come at the middle of the seven-year tribulation, then I'll be able to gauge it. I'll be able to know the day and know the hour because it'll be at three and a half years into the seven-year tribulation. And that's not biblical because, see, no man knows the day or the hour. No man knows the day or the hour. So no one can predict when the rapture is going to be. That's by God's design. Well, some say, well, you know, everybody thought the Lord was coming back in their lifetime. Man, my great-grandfather and his great-great-great-grandfather and his great-great-great-grandfather's dog thought it would... I'm not picking on dogs. I love your dogs. (laughs) But everybody thought it was in their generation by God's design. The apostle Paul thought it was going to be in his lifetime. How about when he writes to the Thessalonian church where we're studying right now in Acts and says, we who are alive and remain? (laughs) We is he. He's in the we. He thought it would be we, (laughs) that he would be alive. We who are alive and remain will be caught up to meet the Lord in the air. The dead in Christ will rise first. And we who are alive and remain will meet them in the air. So he thought the rapture was going to be in his lifetime. The disciples thought that the Lord would return in their lifetime. That's why they asked him, what would be the signs of the end of the age and your return in Matthew 24? And Luke 21, the parallel uh, passage. So what's the point? The point is we need to know the doctrine of imminency. What's imminency? It's a big word, isn't it? Imminency is simply any minute. Yeah, that's the way I remember it anyway, my simple, uneducated, brain-damaged mind. Uh, Jesus could come at any minute. It's imminent. No, we're told in the scriptures he could come at an hour that you and I don't expect him to come. Yeah, I'm thinking today would be great. (laughs) How about this afternoon between the hour of two and three? Who is expecting Jesus to rapture his church at the hour between two and three o'clock p.m. Hawaii Standard Time? Anybody? (laughs) Well, he could come at that time then because that's what he said. I will come at an hour that you don't expect it. Again, by God's design. But we not only need to know why the rapture has to take place before the seven-year tribulation, we need to know that it takes place before the seven-year tribulation, and we need to be able to give an answer as to why we believe that. You can't just say, because that's what I've always been taught. That's what my pastor said to say. Don't do that. If I find out you did that... um, I don't know what we'll do. We'll figure out something, but uh, <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> okay, so you have this uh, fifth feast, the Feast of Trumpets. Now, the trumpets they had are not like the trumpets we have today. The trumpets they have was a ram's horn as pictured here, also known as shofar. Now, if you've ever heard a shofar, it is absolutely majestic. I mean, chicken skin. (laughs) I mean, it's just so cool sounding. Well, anyway, they would sound the ram's horn or blow the shofar, and it would have significant meaning. And the Lord appointed this feast of trumpets as a feast for Israel. On the first day of the month of Tishri, on the Jewish ceremonial calendar, the feast of trumpets was held. Trumpets were blown together uh, to gather uh, together God's people for a holy convocation, relocation, or confrontation. These trumpet signals had different meanings, and they were for different purposes. So what this means to us is that the Feast of Trumpets is a picture of a holy convocation at the sound of a trumpet for the relocation we call the rapture of the church in 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 through 18, and again in 1 Corinthians 15, 52. Now, here's what's interesting, and here's where I differ with many well-respected Bible scholars, and as we're going to see in our study of Acts, don't take my word for it. You be a Berean and see if what I'm saying is true, okay, in your own study. But I want to submit to you and suggest to you that there's two signals in these trumpets, And there's two kinds of trumpets. One of the trumpets is for Israel. No replacement theology here. What's replacement theology? Replacement theology is that the church replaces Israel as God's elect. And this gets people in a lot of trouble, especially 
when it comes to eschatology. What's eschatology? The study of end times events. You're getting a Bible college course right here. <laughs> Crash course. So listen, eschatology is a study of last day's events, end times events. Now, if you replace Israel with the church, then you put the church in the tribulation. Don't do that. Don't put us in the tribulation. We don't belong there. It's not the time of the church's trouble. It's the time of Jacob's trouble. Jacob, a.k.a. Israel, when God renamed him? It's not the time of the church's trouble. It's the time of Israel's trouble. It's the 70th week of Daniel, that seven-year period of time. We're not in the tribulation. We cannot be in the tribulation. Now, if you replace Israel with the church, then, ha, see ya, wouldn't want to be ya. You could go through the tribulation. I have no interest in going through the tribulation. I, <laughs> I'm waiting for that trumpet to sound because I know when that trumpet sounds in the twinkling of an eye, an immeasurable amount of time, we will be like him, given our glorified bodies, which I don't know about you, but <laughs> please, Lord, come quickly. <laughs> I mean, this body got some miles on it. <laughs> so you've got a second trumpet, and you've got a different trumpet with a second signal, and it's found in Numbers, the 10th chapter, verses 1 through 7. Let me just read it for you real quickly. Now, the Lord said to Moses, Make two trumpets hammered of hammered silver. Silver is in typology a picture of redemption. And use them for calling the community together and for having the camps set out. When both are sounded, the whole community is to assemble before you at the entrance to the tent of meeting, which was the tabernacle. If only one is sounded, the leaders, the heads of the clans of Israel, are to assemble before you. When a trumpet, trumpet blast is sounded, the tribes camping on the east are to set out. At the sounding of a second blast, the camps on the south are to set out. The blast will be the signal for setting out to gather the assembly, blow the trumpets, but not with the same signal. The church is not the same as Israel. This still has its fulfillment in Israel. But see, with the birth of the church and the church age, you now have one of these trumpet sounds, one of these trumpet signals to gather God's uh, people, the bride of Christ, to be caught up to meet the Lord in the air. And so, too, does another trumpet gather Israel together. Now, if you're taking notes or if you want the handout, this is going to be key in, to your understanding of the distinction as you delineate the difference between these two trumpets, okay? I told you you're going to need to put your thinking cap on. First of all, you have the last trumpet, which is for us, and you have the first trumpet, which is for Israel, two different trumpets. Now, the last trumpet for us is in 1 Corinthians 15, verses 51 through 52. The first trumpet for Israel is Exodus 19, verses 16 through 17. Again, to gather God's people. Now, the last trumpet is not the seventh trumpet in Revelation 10, 7, which happens at the middle of the tribulation, but which, by the way, what happens at the middle of the tribulation? That's right, Israel realizes, you know what, this Christ that we've embraced is the Antichrist. He's not our Messiah. And they come to a saving knowledge of the true Christ. For the last half of the th uh, tribulation, for the last three and a half years, they flee to Petra. The whole house of Israel gets saved. Again, that's the purpose of the tribulation, right? What You guys know the song. <laughs> the purpose of the tribulation for the salvation of the Jewish nation. Everybody now. <laughs> That's the purpose of the tribulation. It's for the salvation of the Jewish nation who will come to a saving knowledge of their true Messiah at the middle of the tribulation. When that trumpet, that seventh trumpet, the, the uh, trumpet sounds and Israel comes together and comes to Christ. But it's, and this is where replacement theology gets in trouble. It does not refer to the church. There's another trumpet for Israel, and that's why the Feast of Trumpets can have two meanings, two fulfillments prophetically in one person, the person of Jesus Christ.